What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with a blender modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to model a simple barrel inside of Blender and we're going to add materials to it as well. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is a really good exercise because it really teaches you how to use um, the geometry of different objects in order to create shapes that you want. And so when we look at a barrel it most closely resembles a cylinder. So what we want to do is we want to delete our default cube and we want to add a cylinder. So inside of object mode we're going to hit shift A, we're going to add a cylinder. So the cylinder is going to come in right on this central point right here. And so the first thing you're going to want to do before you do anything else is you're going to get this little menu in the lower left hand corner. We want to reduce the number of vertices in this object. So you can see how I can click and drag this to adjust the number of vertices that are created. Well in this situation I want to create 12 vertices. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key and we should be good to go with this. And so the other thing we want to do is we want to move this so that it's sitting on top of our origin. So we're just going to type the uh, G key, then the Z key. We're going to select our object, type the G key, and then type Z. And in this situation, this is going to be one meter below ground. So we're just going to type in one. And what that's going to do is that's going to move this up one meter so that now it's sitting on the ground. And now what we can do is we can kind of extrude this up to make it the size of the barrel that we want to create. Well in this situation the way that I'm going to do that, and there's different ways to do this, is I'm going to hit the tab key, go into object mode, and then I'm just going to, or edit mode, and I'm just going to go into face select mode, select this face, and I'm just going to type the G key and the Z key and move this up a little bit. So say we'll move this up to, we'll call it two meters. That may be a little bit tall, but we'll go ahead and use this for now. And so now what we have is we have this cylinder in here and we want to use this cylinder in order to create our barrel. And so if you look at a barrel, so if you look at this barrel right here, you can see how as a general rule, it's a cylinder, but then around the middle, the shape scales outward. So we want to select this edge loop right here and we want to scale this outward. So the easiest way to do that is going to be, well, the first thing we need to do is we need to add a couple edge loops. So we want to just type in control R that'll let us insert an edge loop and then we're going to scroll our mouse up so that we get two edge loops inside of this image. Then we're going to click and then you can see how you can move this up and down. I'm just going to right click in order to get out of that. Um, and now what we have is we have a shape that's split into three different sets of faces. Well we want to select the loop around the middle here. So in order to do that I'm just going to go into face mode and I'm just going to do an alt click on one of these edges. When I do an alt click what that's going to do is that's going to select this whole edge loop going around this barrel. And then I just want to activate the scale tool by tapping the S key. And then now I can move my mouse up and down or in and out in order to create kind of a barrel shape. So this kind of gives us the shape that we want to start working with. And now what we need to do is we need to add a little bit of detail. So we need to do a few different things. We need to add the metal piece that's going to go around the different joints on here. And I'm going to have four of those. Then we also need to add a little inset on the top as well as our detail running across the top of this object as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the detail on these two edges. And the way that I'm going to do that, and again there's different ways people do this, but I am going to use the bevel tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edge mode or edge select mode and I'm going to hold alt and click on this and then I'm going to hold alt and shift and click on this. And so what that did is that allowed me to select both edge loops in here and now we're going to use the bevel tool in order to add a little detail. So I'm just going to type in control B and I'm going to move my mouse until this bevels. So you can see how you can make this as narrow or as thick as you want. So in this case I'm going to do something like this and notice if you scroll your mouse up you'll get more edges in here. You don't want that. We simply want this to be something like this. So just beveling this off so we have an extra face in here. And so now with these still selected what I want to do is I want to extrude these outward. So in order to extrude these outward, because I have all of these faces selected, I'm going to type the E key. Notice when I type the E key, this kind of acts a little bit weird because this is trying to extrude these along an axis. Well, what we want to do then is we want to tap the S key in order to scale them outward. And the only problem with that is we're getting a lot of weird up and down in here. We want to exclude the Z axis. So we're just going to 
type in shift Z and now this will allow us to extrude these outward and you can extrude these outward as much or as little as you want depending on how thick you want these metal bands to be I think I'm gonna make it something like this right here so now what we have is we have a barrel with metal bands around here and we're gonna add a couple more in a second but first what I want to do is I want to go into the top and I want to off or inset this face inward or this ring inward a little bit and I want to extrude this down so this has a little bit of depth so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go into face select mode, click on this face, and if you want to, you can select this bottom face as well by doing a shift click. And we're just going to type the I key for inset. And so when we do an inset, what that's going to do is that's going to inset this face inward, which is going to create kind of the thickness of our barrel. And it also creates a face that we can extrude downward in order to give this a little bit of depth. And so I'm going to click off of this for a second, then I'm going to single click just so I have this face selected, I'm gonna type the E key and the Z key in order to extrude this down. And you can make this as deep as you want to. But I'm just gonna extrude this down a little bit. And then what I wanna do, or what you can do, and uh, it may not be that important depending on what you're trying to do here, but what you can do is you can create individual faces across this. And the way that I would create individual faces is you need to delete out this face. So you can type the delete key and then click on faces in order to delete this. And so what we want to do in this situation is we want to create a face between our different edges inside of this object. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this edge, hold the shift key and click to select this edge and hold the shift key to select this edge. And then I'm going to type the F key in order to create a face using those selected edges. So we're just gonna do the same thing all the way across here, just like this. And you can see how this is very easy to do just by selecting those edges. And the nice thing about this shape and the way we have this selected is these are all quads, so they all have four edges. So this is good solid geometry. And you can do the same thing on the bottom if you want to. So in this situation, I'm probably just gonna extrude this up because we're never gonna see this, but if you're creating something like a game asset or something like that, you can come in here and make sure that you uh, that you create that on the bottom as well. And so this looks pretty good. There's a couple other things I wanna do though. I wanna add a metal band around the top and the bottom to make this look a little bit more interesting. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna type Control R to add an edge loop and we're gonna single click and then move our mouse up a little bit and slide this to where we want it and then we're gonna click. And then we can just come in here and do an alt click to select this ring. Type E to extrude, S for scale. You can type shift Z in order to make sure this doesn't scale outward. You can make this probably about as thick as this other piece you have right here. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. So control R, click, move my mouse down, click again, face select mode, alt click to select the loop, and then E, S, shift Z. And then just extrude that out a little bit. And so what you can do, I've seen people do this before, is if you wanted this to have a little bit more of like a fat um, shape, so if you wanted this these boards to have more of a curve or something like that, you could add an edge loop in the middle and then scale that out a little bit to make this go out. I think I'm gonna actually leave this as is. I think I like the way that this looks. But what we have is we have a very simple barrel shape. The problem with this barrel shape right now is if you're trying to create an asset that looks kind of like used or something like that, it's a little too uniform, right? Like everything is way too uniform in here. And so you could come in here and bevel off all of these edges to make them a little smoother. Um, you could definitely do that. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but what I do wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna move some of the vertices around. So this looks a little bit more used um, and a little bit more worn in. And so you could either do that by going into like vertex select mode or something like that and using the move function in order to move things around. Or I like to use the sculpting tool 
for this just because it gives me a little bit more control. So to use the sculpting tool, all you have to do is go over into sculpting. And I just like to use the grab tool. So just tap G in order to grab these and kind of move them around. And one thing you're gonna notice about this right now is this is kind of in a symmetrical editing mode. You see how there's these different, you see how there's these different vertices that are showing up and they're kind of symmetrical in here. So you can turn that off by going over into the toolbar over here under symmetry and unchecking the box for mirror you can see how then i don't get the individual then i don't get the individual or the uh, mirrored selection points on the vertices so you can do that or not do that that's kind of up to you depending on how you want this to look um, for me i'll go ahead and turn it off and you can see how i'm just moving these around just a little bit just enough to make this barrel look like it's been beat up a little bit and um, just kind of non-uniform so like these metal pieces weren't made exactly to the right dimensions or something like that. And so now if we go back to our layout mode, you can look at this and you can see how this is just a little bit more irregular, which is kind of what we're looking for in this situation. Then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some materials to this. So we're not gonna do anything special with this. We're just gonna use some colors. But what I wanna do is I wanna go into the shading section and then in the shading section I'm going to add a couple different materials so down below in this little menu I'm just going to click on new and I'm going to add a material and for this material I'm going to call this brown dash wood and all I'm going to do for this one is I'm just going to select a base color and we're going to add a value for some kind of a wood material so you can get that color from wherever you want. I actually use a color picker in my Chrome um, web page that can pick colors off of uh, websites, but we're just gonna type in the hex value 553700, hit the tab key. So you can see how what this did is this created this brown material that gets applied to our object. And one thing we wanna do is we probably wanna bring the roughness up because this is supposed to be wood, we don't want it to be reflective. We can also drag that specular down a little bit to get more of a flat material. So that's gonna be our wood material. And I also want to create a metal material. So for my second material, I'm gonna call this gray dash metal. And for this one, we're just gonna make this a gray color. And so for our gray color, we're gonna enter a hex value of ACA495. So that gives us our gray material. And so right now you can see how this object has the gray material applied to it. I'm actually gonna go into my, or my material properties and you can see how right now um, this object has the gray material applied to it. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna add another material to this list. So I'm just gonna click the plus button. And so after you click the plus button, this is gonna add a new material. You can just select the drop down and add our brown wood material. So now both of those are active inside of our model. And then now I'm gonna go back into layout mode and I'm just gonna apply these materials. And one thing to note right now is you can't really see the materials. So right now we're in solid preview mode. We wanna click on the second option, which is going to be material preview. And so we wanna make sure we're in edit mode by hitting tab. And then inside of my material properties, I'm gonna type the A key for right now, and I'm just gonna apply this brown wood material to everything. So you can see how this brown material has now been applied to this object. Well, now what I wanna do is I wanna go through and I wanna select these faces that don't have the brown material. And there's other ways to do this as well. I'm just going to do an Alt Shift click and start selecting these edge loops. And by the way, if you accidentally click off of this, one of the cool things about Blender is if you do a control Z, you can get that selection back. So if you accidentally click off of that, you can just do a control Z to get it back. But I'm just gonna keep doing a shift or an alt shift click in order to select all of the edge loops for the things that are gonna be metal. So now I have all of these selected. What I wanna do is I wanna go over into this material section and the second material we added, which is our gray material, we wanna assign that to our selected faces. So just click on the gray material and click on assign. Now if I click off of this, you can see how I have this barrel in here that is now ready for rendering or really whatever we want it to be. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna tap the Z key to go into wireframe mode, and I'm actually gonna select everything above this face, and I'm just gonna type the G key 
and the Z key, I'm just gonna move this down because my barrel was getting kind of tall. Well, I'm just gonna move all of my faces down to make this a little bit shorter. Then I'm gonna type Z and then click on solid to go back into this. And we actually want to be in material preview mode. So that's from an in this video. In the future, we're gonna do more simple models like this so that you can start practicing modeling different things inside of Blender. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about the workflow, about the video. Was it helpful to you? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.